everyone, Grohamid here from Loudwire, and it's time to set the record straight again with some Wikipedia fact or fiction. Today I'm here with Taylor Momsen from The Pretty Reckless. Thank What's you up? so much for coming by. Thank you for having me. Uh, you told me before this that you think that your Wikipedia page is pretty much all wrong. Yeah, it's probably. It's, it's pretty, pretty much all wrong. <laughs> all right, working, on, working on updating it. All right, well, this is a perfect time to set the record straight. Um, I'll read something that I saw on your various pages, and uh, you can just give me a true or false and maybe elaborate if you want. All right. All right, first up. Uh, you started modeling at the age of two, although at that age uh, you really didn't want to be working. <laughs> well, I did start modeling at the age of two, and I don't really even think I knew what working was, so I don't... It's so sure, I mean, I don't think any two-year-old wants a job yet, but no. <laughs> um, so true, I guess. Is there any part of your life where you remember not working? No. 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 Right. Easy answer. All right. Um, it says your first acting gig was a commercial for Shake and Bake at age three. That is true. Correct. That's a little more updated than I thought. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's move to age five. Uh, you recorded the song uh, Christmas, Why Can't I Find You for the for How the Grinch Stole Christmas. True. True. Mm -hmm. um, all With the way James Horner, my first recording studio. Cool. Uh, all the way back then, mm -hmm. did you have a feeling that maybe you enjoyed music more than acting? Oh, yeah. Easy? Oh, easy. Yeah, no. It was. <laughs> I grew up like I could have melodies before I could talk, so it was... Really? Mm-hmm. It's, it's on tape, too. I'm not even lying. Sure. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's been in my blood forever, and as soon as I could write, I started writing, singing, playing piano, and then switched to guitar, and I don't know, it's, it's something I've always done, and it was always my end goal. But I didn't really want to release the songs I wrote at five, so, you know. No. <laughs> to wait till I wrote a record. Heidi material, Montag was fine suck. with it, though. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a weird one when I got that phone call. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, yeah. What, um, Someone just sent me the song, and I was like, is this for real? I yeah. don't know. How did she even get this? But That song, you wrote that when you were eight? Yeah, I was like so eight or nine or something. I was young. So you're singing an eight-year-old's words there. That should tell you a lot. Yeah. It's, I, I, hey, to each their own. <laughs> All right. Uh, as of 2011, you've quit acting to focus on music 100%. Yes. They're Wait, doing well. Wait, it's 2011. What is it now? It's 2013. 2013 now. I don't know where I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> 2011, I guess it was, was it 2011 or 2000? No, I guess it was 2010. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so a little bit off. Yeah. But it's all fuzzy. Uh, the Pretty Reckless was originally known as just the reckless. True, but not known. It was originally, it's almost true, it was originally supposed to be called the reckless, but we had trademarking issues. So That's exactly what it says. Someone threw out the word pretty and we thought it was better than moderately reckless, so <laughs> we, <laughs> it stuck. Is there like another band called the reckless? There, yeah, I guess there's a jean company and a, I guess it's just a common word Jeep. or something. I don't, I don't know, right. there's any trademarking, I don't understand any of that. <laughs> All right. Uh, this was interesting for me. Uh, the Pretty Reckless's first headlining tour consisted of 112 shows and was about twice as long as any tour you've had since. I actually don't know. No, it a, bl a blur. It's once it's again. yeah. Tours once I I don't know what to, you know when tour starts tour ends. There's no end or start to it. It's yeah. You do the record cycle. We toured Light Me Up for two and a half years and we were kind of consistently on the road so. Um, it, that very well could be true, but uh, it's all just one giant tour until you make another record. Right. Yeah, and it was listing all of the individual dates, and I'm realizing basically all of 2011 you were on the road. Yeah, starting in, we started in Warped Tour in 2010, and then after that we pretty much didn't stop. <laughs> was that a difficult transition in any way, to get so accustomed to road life? Um, not really. I, I think... I was already used to not sleeping very much, so <laughs> that's, yeah. I think, probably the hardest thing. Um, there's weird little rules on tour that, like, you don't think about, like, a normal person when, like, com like things that, like, getting up and taking a shower in the morning, that's something that, like, you have to struggle to figure out where you're going to take a shower and find a shower and find a bathroom and find a, like, so the, the common things that you do when you're home become 
the essentials on tour. It's like, well, I need towels. Where am I going to get towels? Where am I going to do laundry? You know, all that type of stuff. So that's, you got to get used to it. But tour teaches you to really just roll with the punches and take it as it comes. Did you start out like real DIY, like in a van with everybody? Or Started, the first tour was in a van and then moved to a bus because it got a little, um, security became a bit of an issue in a van oh wow <laughs> um so we, like crazy fans yeah so we moved to a bus oh, that has a locked door now so. and, you, <laughs> and it's and it's nicer <laughs> oh, sure. obviously I'm, I'm sure it's nicer <laughs> but you know van you gotta pay your dues oh absolutely van tour. was there like one particular incident where you're like okay we need to we really need to get a bus with a driver slash security guard um well no security guard that's where mark comes in he plays bass and he's, he's built in security because okay. he's six foot something it's huge um but just when you know when you leave the show and then there's people follow the car to the hotel and you have the that type of situation but it was more when we could afford a bus then we got a bus <laughs> yeah all right um You've said that your personal influences uh, include Kurt Cobain and Joan Jett. I said Kurt Cobain. Not Joan Jett so much? Not so much Joan Jett. Okay. But, I mean, I like Joan Jett, but I wouldn't call her an influence per se. I would go more Beatles, Zeppelin, Who, Pink Floyd, (laughs) ACDC. Right. Well, with, you know, someone as, uh, I guess, enigmatic as Kurt Cobain, how do you inject his influence into your music? Um, you don't. That's the weird thing. I mean, the bands that you listen to, you know, obviously I, I try to listen to the best records of all time because they're the best records. Um, but you you take from artists that you like and, and try to do something new with it. And uh, you can't, you know, as soon as you can't imitate anything because then it just becomes a bad ripoff of something that was already great. So there is no direct, like, taking from someone. It's more um, w- w- listening and, and seeing if something that they're doing can inspire something new, cool. I guess. All right, uh, last one for you. Uh, this was pretty interesting to me. Uh, the track Miss Nothing is about Mary Magdalene after the crucifixion of Jesus. Um. Well, the video is. The video is. Yes. That Not was, the song? That was the treatment of the video. No, the song is uh, written about a, a loved one passing and, and losing your identity and your fucking mind <laughs> afterwards. So it's sure. not the happiest of songs. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, the video treatment was loosely based on that idea of having Mary Magdalene with the Last Supper and Jesus isn't there and she's going insane. Yeah. Was that a concept that you guys came up with? or? Um, yeah, I, I work very closely with the directors who when we make videos. So uh, Mira Davis did that one, and, and he came with that concept, and then I kind of flushed it out with him and, <laughs> and changed a few things. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much. Awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Taylor Momsen from The Pretty Reckless. You want an even funnier fact? With yes. With nothing? We couldn't print the lyrics in the book because I say cunt, <laughs> and no one knows I'm saying cunt. Really? <laughs> it's cunt strewed. No one has any oh, idea. Oh, tricky. And it's the only swear on the entire record, and they yeah. wouldn't let us put it in there, so I just censored the entire song. They were like, you have to say construed in the lyrics. I was like, it's not what I'm saying, and that's not what I wrote, so censor the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and we did. It's so, punk rock. So, you watch, so you're flipping through the book, you got all the lyrics, all the lyrics, and there's nothing censored. Oh, and no one, no one knew why. Well, luckily you can say that here, so yeah, no bleeps. Well, I'm, I'm glad. Don't put a bleep I, in. Don't put a bleep in. I, you can put a bleep in. I don't care. <laughs>